am a confident person in my own circle, mm. but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm real good to get up on stage and tell everyone I love myself. I had to learn that as well, which people don't realise. I just, like, sometimes I felt like a performing seal when I did a blood book tour. I'd have to stand on stage and slap my ass. From Mamma Mia, sitting on the floor inside a cupboard in my house. I'm Mia Friedman, and welcome to No Filter. Today's episode is the blast of sunshine that I think we all need right now. So often I get asked, who would be your ideal guest on No Filter? And I think people imagine that I'm going to say Oprah or like Beyonce or Meghan Markle or someone. And look, if any of them call me, I'm not going to say no. I'll be honest with you. But my true answer when I actually think about it is actually the person that you're about to hear from today. And this is a person who, even if you've forgotten how much you love her, you are going to remember about three seconds after you hear her speaking. Sarah Marie Fidel was in the first season of Big Brother. And I'm not exaggerating, the whole country fell in love with her. I know I did. Her cute pyjamas and her bunny ears and her bum dance, that gorgeous sunny personality... Over those weeks that she spent in the Big Brother house, Sarah Marie became iconic and she really was patient zero of the whole reality star phenomenon because it was the first season of the first big reality show. So none of the housemates had any idea how famous they were going to be when they walked out of the house and into the arms of host Gretel Colleen. They'd been in lockdown for weeks and that's something that all of us right now are really getting to appreciate in a whole new way. So after she did come out of the house, Sarah Marie had to learn a whole bunch of new skills and she had to figure out who she actually was after Big Brother and that unbelievable kind of instant fame that she was experiencing. Sarah Marie and I actually have our own personal history alongside all of this. I was there in the audience on the Gold Coast watching the filming of Big Brother on that night that she was voted out. And she didn't even win, let's remember. She came third. But I just remember being so gobsmacked by the thousands of girls who were all there to cheer for her and they were all wearing their pyjamas and their crop tops and smacking their bums and they had their midriffs out no matter what size they were. And... It was this amazing zeitgeist moment where everyone seemed to be emulating that very particular Sarah Marie brand of body confidence. And remember, this is before the term body confidence even existed. Sarah Marie was also patient zero of the body positivity movement. So at the time, I was the editor of Cosmo and I put her on the cover, both because I thought, well, I really loved what she represented. I thought it was a great thing for women. But also, to be honest, I just really wanted to meet her and become her friend. And we bonded at the shoot. I took my son along at the time he was four and he also was in love with Sarah Marie and she was so divine with him. And she's the only model I've ever seen on a shoot actually eat lunch. And then she put on a bikini and she was exactly the same in person as she had been on the show, just utterly utterly uninhibited and confident. That issue of Cosmo was a bestseller, but we lost touch personally after that. And until I went to Perth a couple of weeks ago, right before um, we all went into social isolation and lockdown, I reached out to see if she'd be up for an interview in person. And we hadn't seen or spoken to one another since that Cosmo shoot almost 20 years ago. So what has Sarah Marie been up to? during all of these years? What's her life like now? I had so many questions and there was so much squealing and hugging when we first saw each other. That was back in the olden days when you could actually hug people. Um, And yes, you won't be surprised to hear that there's a bit of salty language in this episode. So if you've got little kids around, maybe pop some earbuds in. Honestly, this is the antidote to the news that we need right now. It is my great, great, great pleasure to reintroduce you all to the magical, magnificent Sarah Marie. How the bloody hell are you, Sarah Marie? Um, I haven't been like in hibernation. It's just like I never cared to be known in the way that I did what I did and then I was happy to go and come back when, like you, like get to spend time with Mia. But I didn't have to do things to prove myself that I needed to be liked. 
what was your life like before you went into the house? Because it was before Google, so it's not yeah, even I like There's at the time. Can... It's like <laughs> you couldn't stalk your social. You, you could really come in as a as, with a clean slate. I know. Me and my sisters always say that. We go, thank God there was nothing like that before I went into Big yeah. Brother. I did have a lot of fun, and that's the thing. And I think I did, as you all know, worked in a strip club. So I appreciate that time of my life as well because that's where I feel I accepted everyone's body and who they were for who they were because I was surrounded by naked women all the time and the people have perceptions of strip clubs and things like that but it's not what you people some people judge it as so it was, it was girls um accepting the way they are and I saw them naked so that's one body shape that's another body shape and I it almost made me feel comfortable then to go into the house and go where well, everyone's different how did you come to work in a strip club uh, it was just, I was actually working in a pharmacy and I never knew what I wanted to do. And I went there for a Christmas party one night and I ended up helping the person that managed it hand out awards or something like, you know, best stripper of the year or something. And they offered me a job at the front desk at night time. So I took that on and then I ended up managing the girls for like organising buck shows and all their dances for the evening and um, employing the girls as well. And you were just like, what, 20 years old? Yeah, 21. That. Yeah. It was, yeah, I, and I did it. And I loved, uh, it wasn't necessarily because I was working in a strip club. I loved people and I loved the, I was intrigued by how it all worked. And it wasn't a dangerous environment for me to work in. And some people, when 18 year old boys, like groups of boys would come in, I'd say to them, what are you doing here? I'd be intrigued to ask them why. And they felt that they weren't good enough um, good looking enough for a pretty girl to talk to them. So they'd come to a strip club to pay for a, what they thought was pretty to talk to them. And there'd be people that had no one that, that would like someone to talk to them. So they'd pay someone just to sit and talk to them that was they thought as was pretty. Yeah. And there'd be groups of girls that would come because they're intrigued by getting confidence to watch a girl dance. There was no, it wasn't as what some people say it was. Did you, did you, I mean, comparison is something that as women we do all the time. Mm-hmm. Did you compare yourself and your body to these girls who were the strippers? Um, not really. I, we used to look at some of them and say, oh, her bum's nice, her boobs are nice, or look how she shaved herself down there. Oh, that's a good idea. But like, <laughs> oh, like I was intrigued if they had their periods. I would, I would think to myself, what would they do? And they'd yeah. cut the tampon string. And still dance. Like, am I allowed to say stuff like this? Yeah. It was really all interesting for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was um it was just all interesting and it was so natural for everyone to talk about. Yeah. So and I also have four sisters and you've met one of them today. And we've all got completely different body shapes and we were we've always all been so comfortable around each other. So there's never been uh issue for how us. did how did your parents do that? Because I don't know. that's really unusual. There's four girls and we all ate the same, we all did the same things and we all have different body shapes, yet we're all so accepting of each other. Yeah. And, and yourselves. Yeah, 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 we are. Do you know what I did? I was going to do, but I was going to make like, Oh, I'll tell you later. That's all right. No, tell me. I was gonna, I was gonna get, bring a pair of um, bathers and like take my clothes off today and stand there with you. And now I've got my granny undies on because then I check it out. <laughs> I've got my granny <laughs> undies on too. <laughs> and the shit is bras, but I actually got a nice pair of bathers to put on. We'll save that for another day. I uh, want to. Um, how did Big Brother come about? Like you were so, working in the strip club. Yeah. So then I, I was driving home one time and I thought, oh, I need to do something else. I just felt like it was just time to do something different. And when I came home early in the morning, there was an ad on TV, would you like to live in a house with how many people? And I said to myself, well, I've done a Kentucky tour by myself, so this would be fun. So not in my head, it wasn't to be known because none of that mattered then because you didn't know what Big Brother was. So I rang a number, they sent me forms and I had to fill out the forms and then you got to send a video in. And I think it was Peter Abbott said that was the Big Brother, um, Big, Big Brother. Yeah, they're like He's, the executive producer. Yeah, he said my video was the most boring video because all I said on it was <laughs> I had... The girls that were working at the strip club that night were standing around me and I said, if I can handle 25 strippers, I'm sure I can handle the Big Brother house. And then I said, if you want to know more about me, give me the next interview. 
And he was obviously intrigued. Yeah. But he even said when we got to take things into the house, you're allowed to take certain um, things into so you weren't bored. And I only took my tweezers. He goes, what have you taken in? And because me and my sisters always had tweezers when we lived together on top of the toilet seat. Oh, they're going to kill me. So we always just sit there and pluck our bikini line. That's entertaining. It's something to do. Yeah. So I took tweezers in to pluck my bikini line. (laughs) (laughs) See, now I don't care saying it now, like so long ago. What happened in that first interview that you did with, um, so with you, him? And so with... my expectation, so I actually wasn't even going to go when they told me I was um, up for the auditions. I came home from work and I was really, really tired and I made myself have a shower. And then I remember being in the shower going, oh, I'm not going to go to this thing. I just can't be bothered. I'm, and then I had to go to work again the following night. And then something made me get in the car to be at the um, this audition on time. And I parked at the front of the place in a no-stopping zone like so you can get a ticket I didn't get a ticket and I just didn't care and I just walked in I said all right I'll quickly go in and I'm always early and this time I was late and I walked in and everyone was sitting down I went oh hi sorry and I just remember not I always have manners but not caring in this is me where do you want me to go I don't really have time and then that's how it started and then when um we got cut down to the final few that were staying back they said that, oh, we had to go a few people before this other person. I said, I don't have time for this. I'm going to go before you and then I have to go. So then I organised it and I walked in and did that. And I feel sometimes that's what made them maybe think, well, that's what they needed, someone to speak up. Mm, someone who and was had assertive to, and confident. But I wasn't, yeah, as I said, I wasn't rude, I don't think. I just needed things done and I didn't care of how far it went because it was just fun and it was just at the time an idea. Like I didn't have an idea of how big it was going to be. Well, that, it's hard to tell to explain to people who are, you know, younger than about thirty of what like this was the first reality TV I know. show, like the first season of the first reality TV show. Oh, yeah. I'm so lucky because I would. I'm a sucker for reality shows. Like I love them. <laughs> Do you? I love them. I just love, I love the, how every, my thing I love watching him is how everyone interacts. But it does surprise me how then they come off the shows and then cry that their life is over or they um, don't like the way they've been portrayed. And I, how, how many years of reality shows now you should learn your lesson? But, but, but <laughs> and I want to get to that, but you didn't, you, you and that first crew that yeah, went in there. We had no idea. You had no idea. No and you can tell we had no idea because if you look back of what we wore in there to what people wear now, I wore the same, had the same brows on for nearly three months. Like we just wore the same pajamas. I just, you just didn't didn't wear shoes. And then I remember coming out when we had to do robe. The stylist at the time didn't have clothes to suit my figure, so I had to wear the same skirt that I wore for three months in Big Brother on robe that night, and no one even noticed, but I did, do you know what I mean? Because those type of social media things um, weren't out to attack or pick you. Yeah. So no one even realised that I'd been wearing that skirt the whole time, probably washed it twice, and now I'm wearing it on robe. No one would ever do that now. Could you imagine? (laughs) I went up to the Big Brother house. Um, I was there on that night that you came out. I was in the audience. And um, I was so, because I was a massive fan of the show, I used to watch it with my son who was about four at the time. Yeah. And apart from the dancing Duna, which yeah. was um, Christina Ballerina and Pete Timms yeah. who hooked up and there was this, you know, the dancing Duna, that's as rude as it got. It I was know. very, otherwise it was very innocent, but it was fascinating just watching people Interact. Have, interact and have boring conversations. And I think sometimes the things that we were talking about people weren't really talking about as yet the things we would say and yeah so they're just everyday things but people started talking about them and it felt like a little bit like having flatmates because I was a single mum at the time and I was kind of lonely and it was like I would just watch you all every night and get yeah. really attached and really invested so then when I went up to watch I watched you in the house a little bit because yeah. you could go through sort of behind the scenes and then I was out with the crowd and the thing that struck me as the editor of Cosmo at the time there were thousands and thousands of young women mm. wearing your pajamas, like pajamas like yours, yeah. with little crop tops and bunny ears, doing the bum dance and smacking their bums oh, no. and just looking so confident. And it was at the time of heroin chic. It was yeah. the 90s when it was all about, or the early 2000s, when it was all about Kate Moss and girls looking incredibly skinny and it was grunge. Yeah. And you were just a complete breath of fresh air and had such an influence. I think that's what was hard for me, though, being 21 at the time. 
I didn't know who I was either, so I was just being me. So then to come out and some people would say to me, what's it like to be fat and happy or how are you big and happy? But I didn't. And now I even, me and my sisters only watched it a few months ago because I actually haven't watched a full whole series of myself. Yeah. And we were showing our nieces and nephews and my daughter like a YouTube thing of me coming out because we were d- dancing to it one night just to show the kids and they were more excited they saw my mum and dad on stage than me. They didn't care. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's just a... Um, yeah, what was I getting to? I Coming just, out and seeing yeah. thousands of women dressed like you. Yeah, it was just was weird like? because, um, as I said, it. I can't explain myself of why I was liked. It just doesn't – I still don't understand that because, for me, I was just being me and I felt comfortable and that was the answer. And I, that's what I was saying about getting back to seeing on the YouTube is that I was like, I wasn't even big. Like, you know what I mean? I'm my biggest size I am now. Like, this, the size I am now is my heaviest weight I've ever been. But I still feel good. What did you think was going to happen when you came out, like in I your had, head? <clears throat> I remember we had suitcases with Big Brother stickers on them and I remember packing my bag. So I was voted, I think, every every week I had to pack. I was nominated every week. And um, I remember when I packed it going, I wonder if people would notice this suitcase with Big Brother on it when I take it on the plane. Like that's how much I had no idea. Like I, I guess I none of you did know what a big no thing. no idea. And then when I came on stage, the psychologist, Carmel, she had to take me in a room and explain to me what was going on. And I still didn't believe them. And then the next day I went to go to the What shop. did she say to you? She said, try to explain to me how well known I was. And um, I was just too excited to see my family and friends. But I couldn't grasp what anyone was meaning. And then the next day I went to go to the shops with my mum and they were trying to say, you can't. And I put my foot down. I was a little bit shitty and I said, no, I really want to go. And at the time there was just like hundreds of people lined down the streets. Like I couldn't do anything. And it was really hard for me to grasp as well because I was loved for being confident, but then I had to learn a new confidence. I had to stand on stage and talk in front of thousands and hundreds of people. I had to have a confidence where I'm a confident person in my own circle, Mm. but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm real good to get up on stage and tell everyone I love myself. I had to learn that as well, which people don't realise. I just, like, sometimes I felt like a performing seal when I did a, a book tour. I'd have to stand on stage and slap my ass, And, you know, so there was a thing where I felt like I became a character at time because I remember staying in a hotel one morning and I was just really tired, I think, energetically drained. Mm-hmm. And the lady goes, are you Sarah Marie? And I said, yes, I am. And she goes, you don't look very, like, vibrant. And I was like, I said, well, it's five o'clock in the fucking morning. Like, come on. <laughs> I can't be like, how you going all the time? And that's not healthy or normal to say that I am or was because that's not okay either because no one is, you know. So I felt like sometimes... Um, I had to live up to being someone. And then there was, I joined the um, Harry Miller group and I remember. To Harry, be managed. Yeah. yeah and yeah, Harry's you, wisest Harry words to me was just because you have fame, you won't always have fortune. So in my head, I say, okay, I don't know when these, these they did pay well, but then you don't might not work for a couple of months. And what my, paid well when you came out? Um, I didn't do any nightclub appearances or anything for a year or so like other people did, but like I had. Uh, a pajama label out, a book out, and a CD out. And I think I'm the, this is not bragging. This is now something I'm proud to show my daughter. I think out of anyone in Australia, I'm the only person to be known for three months to be able to achieve that in a short amount of time. And that's where I'm now proud to tell my daughter when she grows up of how it become like that rather than, you know, people work their whole lives to have one book out or work their whole lives to have one song or wish to be known. Or to have Did a label. Did you record a song? Yeah, I had Ceremony Bum Dance album. It was in top 10 on video hits. Shut up. I don't remember that. It was a video that. clip. Yeah. Of you doing the bum yeah, dance? Yeah, in, in my pyjamas. Yeah, you can look it up on YouTube. It's still there. But that now these <laughs> things, they're cringeworthy, but then people can say, oh, one hit wonders like people did. I don't care because now I'm a proud mum to show my daughter that this is all because of just being yourself, yeah. you know. So, And that's for me not to brag but now to show that no one else has achieved that and I don't need to um, prove my – I felt like you sometimes now you have to prove yourself to be liked and I think that would be very hard work. So I'm getting back to Harry saying just because you have fame, you won't always have fortune. So only a year after Big Brother, I'm still doing things. I went and got a job at Sports Girl and I was still doing work and then – the newspapers put a big picture of me in the newspaper, this is all I am. And I was so confused because it didn't bother me. I never thought twice about working in there. 
didn't bother me. And for them to say, this is all I am, and I was like, what do you mean? Do you mean they kind of said? Look at her now. Oh, like she's been downfall. famous. Yeah. yeah. And I was so confused because I didn't feel like I was a downfall. I felt like I was just had an experience on a TV show. Good things came out of it. But I'm not the one to care, to hope and wish that I'm still known. So that confused me. And then when I did um, Dancing with the Stars, I'd fly home that night or the next day and I'd go and work at a childcare centre. So I was still doing things that I loved, but people were confused, like trying to say, look at her now, where is she now? All she does is this or that. And I was like, these pay some um, families' bills to put food on the table. Some people, that's all they have as a job. So how can you make people feel like that and say, that's all I am? We're all still human. And I did good, you know, I felt I did good in a positive light. So those things were, um, although most of my experience was um, positive, I had to learn a lot myself how to be confident in other ways and stand up for myself and explain myself, if that makes sense. All of it makes sense. Harry was really wise because a lot of people get fame and money confused and they think that anyone who's famous is also rich. Yeah, it was the best advice from him. Yeah, and then then you still had bills to pay and fame doesn't pay bills. No, and I don't understand anyone that wants to be known just so more people know your name because anyone that has been known understand it's a lot of work and that's where I... What's the work that people don't realise? Answering to others, explaining yourself, living up to something that... um, a lot of people feel like they have to. And that's what I was, um, <clears throat> sorry, mentioned to you before. I've never in my life had Facebook or Instagram. And it, even after going I know, because I've tried to stalk you many times. <laughs> I've stalked and I'm you sure off my I'm not the only Instagram. one. <laughs> I've had a look. I've had a look before. I've I, gone I, like, where is she? Where is she? I almost got panicked. I said to my sister, maybe I'm just coming to Perth and talking in the studio and Mia's on a phone can you look her up to see if she's actually in Perth? Like, and then we saw that you were actually here because I started panicking going, oh, I've been excited, like counting down the sleeps like a little kid. And then, oh, oh she's really here because I started getting disappointed. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd cancel actually No, never. Morning. You're the only person I've said yes to in how many years because I, I love and respect you so much. And people after 20 years don't want to know where is she now, where is she now. And I know – People can make things up. And I've been offered money to sell a story. But I just, you know, to me that doesn't pay me whatever they want to pay me to prove again what I'm doing or how successful in doesn't make sense in my heart or my mind. And my mum and dad always said to me, like, success is how happy you live your life, not how long you last on TV. So I, to me that bit was easy for me to come in and out. And when opportunity comes up, I say yes, like today, 100% yes with all my heart, but I don't do things to be known or to um, be liked. When you were at the height of your fame, when you came yeah. out of the house, social media didn't exist. The internet Mm-mm. didn't really exist. I'm so grateful for Not all like of that. Not like it does now. <laughs> I know. And the word influencer didn't exist because, of course, now, you know, there's this factory that that churns out these reality TV stars, Mm -hmm. the Daily Mail, and there's all that media that runs the stories around Mm -hmm. them and then they're offered teeth whitening deals and they go to nightclubs and they um, get, you know, Bumble will sign them to endorse various things. And they make, they can make a lot of money, maybe yes. not for a long period of time. There are some reality TV stars like Tali Smythe yeah. who has t- made that into a, some longevity as a, in a career as an influencer. Yeah. Most of them probably have 12 months yeah. to make money. Mm-hmm. Do you not like money? I did um, Dancing with the Stars and then I did some, you know, the ones, some one-night TV show things. I don't know. There's so many I can't things. imagine those offers have stopped. Well, some things that you'd get these days as well, I was talking to another friend that at the time she was in a different industry but was known. You got paid very well to be known when we were, people knew who we were. And now a lot of people do things for nothing. So that's where the social media and things like you can just open up your Instagram account and put everything someone needs to know about you on there or sell something. You can do it yourself and there's no need to get paid a good amount of money to go in a magazine. But when we were known at the time, you did get paid well. To um, because it's it can be a job. I mean, if you look at Angie Kent, she's oh, she's up done to about her fifth or sixth reality TV show. Yeah. So you know good you can for do dance, her. yeah, which good for her. She, <laughs> Dancing with the Stars and, and Big Brother, not Big Brother, um, su- uh, not Survivor. What did she do? Bachelorette, Bachelorette. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bachelorette. And, I watched that. Oh, she did do Celebrity. Uh, I'm a, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I <laughs> imagine that those offers come to you. all yeah, the I time. would love. I used to say I would love to do. I'm a celebrity. Get me out. That's one. The only reason. 
I would really love to do that show is because I love eating competitions. Not eating spiders. <laughs> yeah, like I like the challenge. Like I like that's the whole thing that I would love to do that. But then I'd miss my daughter too much. So I couldn't um, go away for that long. Yeah. So things like that, I would do things, um, see people do things for money. I say I'd do it because I like eating competitions and it'd be fun. <laughs> like... Most people, when they become famous, they watch it happen. So even yeah. if it happens quite quickly, they're not like removed from it and then just dropped into it. I mean, yeah. do you remember what it was like walking back onto that stage and seeing all those girls dressed like you? Was yeah, that that's, daunting? Was it exciting? Was it just I think fucking weird? That's, um, the whole thing for me was just so overwhelming. Like mm. I was trying to, and again, I was only I was so young, twenty one. Yeah, so everything was so overwhelming. So then I went from in a house for three months with people that you became friends with and then on stage of being known and asked questions about who you are and how do you do this and why do you love yourself and then there's people copying you. It was a lot to take in and I don't know how or why that I'm a strong person. I've always just been like that naturally to process everything Mm -hmm. but I can understand for some people and, you know, another thing I'm so blessed for, most of my reaction was positive. Yeah. And that's where I'm talking so happily to you right now. And I only missed out by the first week of leaving by 1%. So my life could be different right now. Amy Schumer has a joke in one of her oh, stand-ups. So Isn't she great? Oh, yeah. And she talks about how she goes out in the street just in her regular life yeah. and she'll get papped by the paparazzi yeah. and then the photos will, will come out with captions like, Amy Schumer's so brave, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> or she'll take a selfie and it'll be so brave. Yeah. And there's a real implicit um, condescension in that, isn't yeah, it's there? Just so, you. It's just you. Yeah. And so then for you to come out and you were just being you in the house the way yeah. you always are, and then to have everyone go, you're so brave. Yeah, you're that such was, an that's inspiring com- role model. How did that yeah, feel? Yeah, I think that was confusing for me as well because, um, I, as I said, being so young then, I was just finding myself and my confidence. And I did love fun and I do love people. So, And I didn't care most of the time what people thought. But mm. I, I did. there was a, a time, like when I lost weight after Big Brother, because I went through a stage of um, I ate more because people thought I was fat, so then I didn't care what I ate. Like I, because it wasn't it wasn't a weight thing. I never remember weighing myself when I was mm. younger or anything. So I never thought like that. Then I thought, oh, stuff I'll eat. And then um, I got when I started getting judged, I got offered to um, lose weight. And oh, I got like paid. by Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers some, or something. Some, yeah, some yeah. name it wasn't one of them. Gloria, but it was a name. Um, I can't even remember the name. Of it. And in my, I'm 21. Oh, you're going to pay me a lot of money to lose weight. It wasn't about. Um, being a role model then. I was had a mind of a 21-year-old. I'm going, oh, you're going to give me lots of money to lose weight. Okay, I'll lose weight. What do I have to do? Eat this? Okay, now give me my money. And then I went to do an audition. Um, what do you call those things? A call thing for a travel show. And I said as a joke, I just lost the weight. Oh, if you've got a TV show that will give me some new boobs, I'll have them too. You're standing from the camera. And they go, actually, we do. And the crew <laughs> come in from next door and say, we're doing this medical show. What do you want? <laughs> And I said, oh, I'd love it. Um, I've lost all this weight. My boobs are saggy. They're like, you know, hanging tea bags. Oh, I'll just have implants and a lift. And they said, well, we can do that. So then I went and got boob, the show did gave yeah. me. And that wasn't about and about me not loving myself. That was me being 21 and getting shit for free <laughs> and getting paid. Like there's a difference. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just like. I said it as a I was actually lifting up my boobs as I was talking, going, oh, if you got such a show that will give me some boobs? Like, wait right there, we really do. And I got them. Um, so then when they, I had to do, a, you know, the rounds of radio interviews and this one lady was so disappointed in me. I like, how could you do this? You've lost all your weight and now you're getting boobs, like trying to make me mm. become someone. And I just like, I just was laughing at her because what? how angry she was. I felt sorry for her because it's not what, I wasn't trying to be, I was just, Doing what a young twenty-one year old—I mm. know not every young twenty-one year old. Like just I just asked and I got it. If that makes sense, of course. And also the <sighs> pressure of having this role modelness thrust oh. upon you. I mean, you just went on a reality show. Yeah, you and didn't go. I am going to help women feel better about themselves. Yeah. And my thing was, I was confused. I was like, for being me. So now I want to get boobs, so I can. I got paid to lose weight, so I can. It wasn't about me. Um, saying, oh, no, I can't because of her other people. It was I thought I was liked for being myself. But they did find throughout the times I um, people, I started getting Botox because of makeup art. I don't have it now. But makeup artist said, oh, you should get a bit of Botox here. 
like there, mm. and I was like, between your oh, eyebrows, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, so look at it now. I got nothing. Same. Oh, jeez, same. Um, I love it now, but I did go through a stage of Botox, and that's not. I'm not against people that get Botox because I did really love it. But then I found myself looking in the mirror going, oh, fuck, there's a line. Oh, no, what's that word? Top up? I need a top up. Mm. And I found myself becoming, looking at what else can I um, straighten out? So then I stopped that. Like, um, yeah. And I, I, as much as I say I love it, I probably wouldn't do it again, but I still do love the idea of it. Like it does make you look fresh, but um, <laughs> I don't have it now. Um, yeah, so there was little things where I started to change and um, I remember I had to go to – I never went to those things, what they call the opening of an envelope, like all that stuff. I never was good at those, but I did have to go to something. And I seriously was just going to grab a dress. It was from some shop. I'm, I've never been into labels. And someone that I was with says, you can't wear that there. And I said, why not? And I felt really comfortable. And then I was spending $400 on a top. I had the money to buy it, to go somewhere to suit what I had to go to. And then I was told that don't ever, don't wear that again to another plate, like event. And I couldn't. Because you can't wear the same thing twice. You can't wear the same, but you can. In reality, has anyone done a, a mum, mum or dad drop off at school? You wear the same shit. You don't have to <laughs> change your clothes. You know, in reality, you don't change your clothes every week. You know, you do. You wash them, but you're allowed to wear the same thing you wore More last than week. Once, That's yeah. okay. And most people do have to do that. So that was things that I had to learn about being in the industry. Is that although you liked for being you. You still have to comply to the way the industry handles things, if that makes sense. A hundred percent. What's the, um, I mean, it, it was a time before WhatsApp groups. Yeah. I was going to say, do you guys I have, have a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp yes. group with, with all the big sister. brother people? No, I don't no. speak to any of them. You don't, no. None of you stayed in contact. Mm-mm. I said, I explain, try and explain to people. It's like going on a holiday when you're young. And you meet a whole like group a of people. Like a tour. Yeah, like I did as well. And then um, you meet great people and then I think everyone was finding their own way and I don't feel there was ever any animosity. But in that time, we there was no WhatsApp. I don't think there was much Facebook. I think Facebook just started there maybe. Yeah, it was – no, it was years later. I know we years did a reunion later. thing with a couple of different Big Brother contestants over the years and I did a couple of um, robe things over the years and you meet people and you cross paths. But there was none where um, we've all kept in contact. Are you curious, just like people are curious about whatever happened to Sarah Marie, are you curious about where they ended up? No, I just – I always remember the funny times in there, like just really – like I remember when I was so drunk like eating fish fingers in bed and Ben and Blair were just so angry at me. Just little stupid things that we would do that you can't ever get that back. How I just feel so blessed that I was on a reality show that was the, one of the first ones. Just so grateful. But at the same time when I look back, it was so long ago, it overwhelms me of mm. now I'm older, how did I handle things? What have I, um, I was young to be that known that quick. Like I had security guards wherever I went for like I nearly – a good week coming home and everything like it was it was really different for me and still staying that positive happy person like as I said I felt sometimes I became a character yeah like comedians sometimes say that when they meet people and people go tell me a joke yeah I did you feel like do me do bum bum dance dance all the time and you know what most of the times I would do it because in my head I'm like don't be rude because if it wasn't for them you wouldn't be as loved I mean I don't need someone to love me but because of most people, I had a really good reality experience and I got given a chance to get to see it. And that's another thing. I was so annoying at the beginning, but once people got to know me, they saw that <laughs> I was just being honest, like, you know what I mean, of myself. I don't fucking know. Like, Did that you notice sense? that there was like um like a bell curve of you came out and you were like so famous and then did it peter off yeah. over what period of time? I think because I never went to a lot of things um, that I couldn't keep up with um, – like I remember some of the Big Brother people invited me places. I just said, I just can't be bothered. I just don't. I had that much attention that I just, um, I did go to some things, but nothing where um, they got, they did do a lot of, go to a lot of things. And I just, that's the shy part of me probably. I'm happy to be, um, if I'm happy, I'm happy. I don't need any more. Because I imagine it would be pretty hard because you're, introverted really yeah like you're an extroverted with people that you know and love yeah but it's not like you walk into a room and just start bum dancing and oh yeah and that's another thing I felt difficult for me is when I did go to somewhere or um out people assume that I'd be the life of the party I'm an attention seeker and I'm so opposite like I'm 
oh god I rarely have a drink now like when I was young I used to go out and drink but now I just can't even be bothered but yeah people used to think that um I'd be like oh look at me I'm from big brother but I, I was the opposite I was like no I'll wait in the back of the line you don't have to oh no I will that's embarrassing walking to the front saying this don't is you me. know who I am yeah people yeah. do do that but oh fuck no that's shame no way <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine also particularly I know when I met you for the first time um at the Cosmo shoot, I or maybe it was, it. you know, I, I, I just, swear I still got those bathers still somewhere. Do you? Yes, the, um, blue with the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got them. I'm sure I have. They're all packed away. And you, you know, I, I thought, I wonder if she'll be the same as she kind of is, as as I think she's going to be. Yeah. And you were just so delightful that day. And I've never, I've been on a lot of shoots, but I've never seen a model eat lunch and then put on a pair of bathers. <laughs> I really and was pose for the it. camera. I'll do it for you another and day. And you were so gorgeous with my son as well. Oh. He was so starstruck. And you were so gracious with it all because I, I imagine it would have been very strange to have people think they knew you really well. Yeah. But you don't know them. No, well, that was a weird I, kind of intimacy. Yeah, it is because even when I had I did work on radio and um, interviewed people on the carpet and stuff, I had to some had to have someone stand behind me and tell me who everyone is because I'm really bad with celebrities. And when I did things, people would come and talk to me, and someone would say, "Do you know who was just talking to you?" Like they knew of me, but say they were really famous, and I had no idea. And I just talked to them as weird, like mm. people to me are people. And I was really naive to that type of stuff as well. I didn't know who anyone was. What did you do for money? Like how long did the money last for? Oh, mine was good. Yeah, it was good. So um, it all it all worked out. <clears throat> so I lived in – when I first come to Sydney, I didn't have any money. Well, not a lot to live in Sydney. So Harry actually um, gave me like money first and then paid for my accommodation and that and then work came from there. So that was good. So yeah. he invested in you. Yeah, he knew, but I didn't realize how um, well known he. I didn't have a clue how. Yeah, because he's the, the, the was the most famous agent in Australia. He yeah, and I didn't know that either. Um, Lindy Chamberlain. Yeah. and everything. Yeah, Marshall so I Hines. didn't understand all of yeah. that either. So um, that was funny to meet him, and I was blessed to have met him, and now worked obviously with his daughter Lauren, and yeah, so I'm still lucky. That's what I said to them. A, la- a girl that works with for Lauren, I said, how come you keep getting me things and I don't make you money anymore? <laughs> like there's, you know what I mean, how lovely is that after all these years that I'm not making lots of money like I used to, yet they still, you know, will. But you could tomorrow. Well, maybe you'll set me up an Instagram account, Mia. <laughs> we'll see. I can do my cheap beauty products that I use. What so, work have you done uh, for the last however many Well, years? I've been a mum for five years and now I'm at the moment studying my teacher's aid, which I think for um, Cert 4, which is for um, teacher's aid and special needs. So I'm working, for me, that's important to, um, on the school holidays, I can have time off and still, you know, time off my daughter. So that's my main thing I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. What was dating like after you came out of the house? I didn't really. I was just, um, yeah, it was funny because you did get a lot more attention. So um, I did meet people, but then you think, why did they like you? Mm-mm. Just things like that. Did you feel like you had to live up to? Yeah, this idea and then I get you... pissed off if they think they're trying to act normal, and then they'd say, "So do you still keep in contact?" Or like bring it all up, and then I go, "Damn it!" Like, yeah. which is natural as well. But um, I wasn't. I was just so busy and um, just did so much. What's your reading of reality TV now? You said oh, you're I love a big it. fan. Yeah, I love it. What I love watch? Love what Island. I loved that, and um, I'm watching at the moment. Um, Married at first sight, that's just like a train wreck. That's just terrible, isn't it? How do you see it differently to how maybe I would be watching those shows? Um, It's so um, everyone's not for each other. I find now that everyone's against each other, like there's plots and it's not uplifting. (sighs) It's all about conflict. It's conflict rather than encouraging and betrayal and how dare you not tell me something when they don't really have to tell you because you don't really know each other. You've known it. Does that make sense? Like no one owes anyone anything and they are allowed to be in it for themselves and they don't have to have a dinner party and tell everyone their shit. They don't have to. Like it's very, I find it more of intriguing, like mm-hmm. how how I lived for three months in there and I honestly didn't cry. I think I cried when Christina Bellerina left. 
I didn't cry the whole time, so I don't understand how they cry so easily. And um, you do have a psychologist, so we did. You do have help, and I could imagine that everyone does have help now. Was that helpful, having the psychologist? I made stories up because I got so bored of talking to them. I'd go and ring up and ask for Carmel and go, Hi, Carmel, I think I'm going to quit smoking when I get out the house. (laughs) I haven't had a cigarette, like, for three months. (laughs) (laughs) And when I met her, I had a laugh. I said, I just make up so much shit to you. (laughs) Like, because I was just like, oh, we can talk to a psychologist I'm just going to talk to someone new because like we would know we had a set thing of magazines in the house and Ben would say what's on page 28 and we had read all those magazines so much that we could read word for, tell you word for word what was on every page so it's just bored bored yeah but I didn't I don't think I've been a person that's been like can say I enjoy my own company but I found things to do mm-hmm. Mm. to make it more enjoyable. And I loved, I remember laying in the herb garden. That was my um, sanctuary where if, if I laid down, I remember I couldn't, um, I could smell the chooks, I could smell the herbs. And I used to tell myself when someone would really piss me off, where you could feel you you're choking up, I was like, this is not forever. These people, you don't know them. This is not the rest of your life. This is a three-month holiday. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I'd start telling myself. And then they wouldn't bother me, if that made sense. So that's why I don't understand how on these shows – People take it so to heart of what someone else has said on the show when you're not all going to be friends at the end of it. Like, you don't have to be. Do you think, though, that's because everyone knows that you get more screen time, the more conflict you're involved in and the more famous you are, the more screen time you get, the more famous you are and the more famous you are, the more money you can make when it's over? that's a very exhausting way to make money, though, isn't it? Like, you got to still love your heart, like, like, like feed your soul some good positive stuff as well. Like you can't always be out to attack to outdo someone else. But that's the way some most of the sometimes the social media ways go sometimes, isn't it? Did dyeing your hair, was that a, an attempt to get some an- anonymity back? No, that was, this is my colour. I haven't coloured my hair in two years. This is wow. me. This is my natural colour. I've got a few got greys. Beautiful hair. I remember I did get house. it washed and blow dried yesterday. Good. Just because it's <laughs> such a fizzy mane. Um, but rarely, just like I would be pony. very jealous if I your did hair, try if you just you. woke up like that. No, no, no. I did try for you a little bit. Um, yeah, that's the only thing I did for you. Other than that, I've got my. Did you get recognised less when you went back to your normal colour and you weren't blonde anymore? Um, no, I think I did Dancing with the Stars with dark hair. Um, no, people will say like. Um, if I say my full name, it feels like I'm showing off. So then I'll say Sarah and then someone will say, like, when I've been on holidays with my daughter or something, they'll go, are you? And then I'll say, I don't like saying yes, I am, because they're not meaning that. But people do, I think, more um, in their 40s and 50s, they still will, if they some hear me laugh or speak or they go, I just know you from somewhere. Like, I just know you and I can never say it because I, then I think, oh, my God, you've seen me naked or you've, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's... It's like, I was going to ask if you get recognised still a lot. Not all the time, but it's just when I don't expect it. And women and that, in their 40s and 50s like me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's um, – and, you know, as I said, I've just – I get um, overwhelmed that people still know me, but it's okay because it's positive, most of it. It's not just that they know you. I have a, um, I do a lot of public speaking and part of my my show that I'm doing at the moment and, and speeches that I give and I talk about my time at Cosmo mm. and body positivity and I show the cover mm. that of Cosmo that you were on. And that was the such shoot a big that deal did, then. Wasn't I nearly it? lost my job over that. I know, I I'm so, so sorry. No, I was so ah. proud. I was so proud. But look at I, that moment now for what you have. I would have walked out. I know. Um, to, to keep you on the cover. Me goosebumps. But when that image goes up, mm. th- there's this noise that comes from the audience every single time and it's mm. like, oh. Well, one day, the next time you're in Perth, I'll seriously just come and do a wave for you. <laughs> I'd love it because I don't know if you I'd understand. I'd probably cry. I'm sad. I don't. I'm really dopey like that. How women feel no. about you. Like no. you are so Ugh. loved in a way that I haven't seen any – people – like I could put a photo of Oprah up there and everyone would be like, yeah, cool, Oprah or whatever. But that when people see you, there is such an outpouring of – affection oh, and love you. for you that I don't know if you I don't know that can bit. feel. No, I, that's a bit that I don't understand. Like I just don't, I don't know if it's because I'm me, like people say, oh, I love me, I like how, and you're you, like you go home, you do your home things like me, like you don't understand it, um, how someone can. No, but there's a lot of people that hate me, but everyone oh, and loves me you. Too. No, <gasps> I, I've never met anyone that. Oh, there's people. That don't love, that doesn't feel such, affection is the only word I can think of that describes it. 
like yeah. warmth and affection for you. That's so kind. But I, I, yeah, I don't have an, I don't, I don't know. But I will one day next time you're in Perth, or if I'm ever in Sydney, <laughs> I'll come and do a. It's because of you though, as well. You like you're putting it all on me for how women feel. But I, that's why I got all emotional when I saw you, is because of you. People feel comfortable to have um, done different things in their jobs to make women feel proud and speak out and do all these amazing things. Although I don't have Instagram, I still know how amazing you but are. But you were a pioneer. <laughs> it, it, like, it, you were a pioneer. Like, being in the house, there are so many Instagram influencers and people mm. and Dove got on the bandwagon and did all the things with body positivity. But you were, like, patient zero for the body positive positivity movement. Yeah. And I don't know if you understand yeah, that. I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. yeah, I just don't. Yeah, I really don't. I, I really don't. I was going to, yeah, that's what I said to my sister. We were talking. So I'll just stand in here today and just be all comfortable. And then, oh, would that be okay? I thought you'd think it's okay just to take the piss out, not take the piss out of myself, but how but we began. Just who you are. Like how we began. Yeah, yeah. Like this whole thing of like body. And now I've got extra scars and stuff, you don't know. We all? Yeah. And, you know, everyone's different. Like my body like, has a lot of cellulite. And then I have a friend that has a lot of stretch marks, but I don't have any stretch marks, hardly mm. any. And my body fluctuates. So that's why it's amazing that everyone's body is different. It's not like plus sizes. Hey, it's different sizes rather than – and I don't have my boobs yeah. in anymore. How did you get them out? Yeah, they were annoying me. So I went and why got a – Why did um, you? Because they look so big now. Yeah, they get just, bigger as you get older, yeah, though, they, don't they? Oh, no they, one tells they got you that. A, um, they got one of these bras on. How um, old are you now? 42 this year. Um, so – the they started annoying me and I never really liked them. What anyway. do you mean annoying? I don't know. I never actually I just did it as I said because they were free. They were free. <laughs> yes. I would never spend twenty grand on boobs. Like just no, but that's the that's the personality I was I am, I was. Um they were free. And as I got older, they were annoying me. So I went the one was actually leaking, it had oh. a little crack in it. So I got them taken out. So that was good. But what I was that like? What? Getting them taken out. Oh, hooray. Get the fuck out. Yeah. And done. then were your boobs Oh, they're like... terrible now. I could, like, hang down and rub my knees with them. <laughs> <laughs> I can pour a drink under them again. I can pour you a drink. Remember I did that? I can, yeah. <laughs> I can pour you another drink. Pour a drink with your boobs. Under your boobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. that. Remember that ridiculous thing about the pencil Pencil, test? yeah, yeah. And so, you meant to be able to put a pencil under Yeah, mine was a drink bottle in Big Brother House. And, like, we actually seen that, me and my sisters. are like, oh, my God, I was so brave because people now just wouldn't do stuff like that. But that wasn't me showing off. That was me having fun. I feel like I have a fun personality, like, not being mean to myself but just taking the piss, like just yeah. having a bit of fun, not caring, you know. I think we've forgotten. We're so into quick judging and not letting people, like what's that saying, tall poppy? Mm. Just be happy for people. I remember after that thing came out um, of you in Sports Girl, you lost your job there, didn't yeah. you? Or you I think quit because I quit. there was so much attention. Yeah, I couldn't be bothered. Yeah, I couldn't be bothered. Yeah. I was almost disappointing because I was like, this shouldn't you be proud of me that I'm not like going, oh, look at me, I'm too good for you, I'm not going to talk to you, you and you. I was like, I'm embracing everyone that loved me before, the person I was before, and still get to do TV at the same time because I'm still me. What surprised you about being becoming a mum? Oh, my God, that I know that some people have different ways of dealing with being a mum, but for me it just feels so natural, feels so easy. Did you always know you wanted to have kids? Yeah, always, always knew. But I actually had um, had to have hysterectomy two years ago. So oh, I'm sorry, why? Oh, because oh, I always had, um, my whole life I always had my period all the time. And that was, you know, when I went into Big Brother, when they rang me, this mm-hmm. is a true story, I've never said, when they rang me to say um, that I got into Big Brother, they said, do you have any questions? And my only question I had to them, was there a tampon box? <laughs> <laughs> Out of it, you've just been selected for this television show. <laughs> You're going to be on TV. Do you have any questions for me? And I went, yeah, is there a tampon box that I always have my period? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Did oh, they put one in? No, it was a bin. I think it was a bin. But I remember rolling them up. Yeah, so that's am I allowed to talk like that? Of yeah. Course. So I always made sure I said you have to make sure there was plenty of tampons and pads because that was the worst bit on Big Brother was wow. having your period. That was terrible. So I always had my period and always had spotting. And then even when I was pregnant, I had, like, bright blood the whole time. That must have been so scary. Yeah, but because I, I was when so pregnant, used to it. Yeah. I was so used to it. And I never had morning sickness or anything. I was so blessed like that. So, Did you? Were you deliberately trying to get pregnant or it was a happy accident? No, nah, yeah, yeah. It's just meant to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then 
why did you have to have the hysterectomy? So then I went to the doctors and explained that, you know, was it two years? Just turned 40. Yeah, how I've always, and I had really, really bad pains and they suggested um, for me. And I, I knew at that time I wasn't going to have, because it's me and my daughter at the moment. So I knew at the time that I wasn't having any more children. I was so content with having a healthy beautiful child as now so I said okay I had to think about it and I'll have it but then it went terribly wrong but hang on did you I'm going to diagnose endometriosis is that what you had yeah I had so many things my whole life little bits like cysts and endometriosis and I always had um what's it you know those little operations through your belly when I was younger yeah I had all that so it was always and I never really talked about it because I just dealt with my pain and stuff as I went so it wasn't something that I ever discussed so then I did have the hysterectomy, but it went terribly wrong. And um, they, she, they accidentally cut through my bladder so badly that I was in a surgery for six hours having bladder surgery after my hysterectomy. So That's not fair. No, it was very bad. So then I was in surgery for six hours on top of my hysterectomy, all in that same space of a day. And then I was in hospital for a week with a catheter. Mm-hmm. And then I was in a ho- at home for a week with a bag praying for my life that that this is the only two weeks I have to have one. So I appreciated myself even much more after my mm. body healed. So Grateful to be able to do away. Yes. Yeah. I still dribble in my undies every now and then, yeah. but everyone does. Well, that's just <laughs> our age, really, yeah. isn't it? But you know not many people talk about that because I said it as a joke one day to some, really? uh, like someone, one of them, a mum, my friends, and she's Oh, I'm so glad you said that because sometimes I do and I haven't even had, like, hysterectomy. And I said, oh, yeah, that, that's why. Like, some people like don't. Like bladder leakage, LBL. Yeah, but people just don't really, yeah, um, right. sometimes they don't feel like they can talk about it. Mm. But if you make it into a, like, it's so, it's normal. So like, normal. But women try and um, sometimes don't want to admit that they do, that happens, but it does. Like, who cares? So you've recovered from that surgery Oh, yeah, now. I'm very good at um, positive, being grateful that, it was very um, a shock at the beginning, yeah. but now I'm blessed that I'm back to. Did know. that put you into sudden onset menopause? No, or I still you have le- my ovaries. Left your ovaries. Yeah, I still have my ovaries, but everything else is gone. Yeah, yeah, and I got a good scar now, not from a cesarean, <laughs> from a bladder surgery. How was birth for you? Um, I had an emergency cesarean, Ooh. so um, I never went to any classes. Nothing. I always felt what will be will be. So I didn't want to train myself into something that was. A, you know what the I mean? The baby's got to come out when Either you go way. to the So I not. wasn't being superwoman. So I was, if I was doing natural, I'm doing natural. If I had to do, and I ended up having to do emergency cesarean. Either way, you're amazing making a baby or however people get babies. You're all amazing, whatever parent you are. That's how I see it. Mm. And there's, but I just remember saying to mum, how do people have fucking time for music and candles? Like, <laughs> like, 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 you know, like I just don't see how you have time to prepare for that stuff. But some people do, you know, really. Most birth plans go to shit. Yeah. So other than that, it's just like every other birth that's, you know, you're so happy when it happens and. Yeah, it's amazing. So that's where I focus now on everything that I've done. I now look at that I'm so proud to show my daughter. I think you are still the same person. Oh, well, we are. In like, so many ways. So many ways. In all the good ways. Growing up, you know. Like You're a, a grown-up version. A grown-up version. Yeah, yeah. But we learn and you grow and you deal with things differently. Um, I don't think I could be as disappointed as easily now as what sometimes I've Felt. And don't get me wrong, there was times I was very alone when I did do appearances and stuff. Like I'd say, how like you know, you I was doing around going around Australia, and I was like, how do all these people love me? Yeah, I'm sitting in this hotel room by myself. Like I'm so alone. Like I felt really, really alone. But yet, yeah, hang on a minute, you just done that whole appearance thing, then you go, mm, I'm eating dinner by myself again. Yeah. Again, <laughs> you know, so it was a weird feeling and then you just couldn't go and hang out with someone because then it's like, are you drawing attention to yourself or you question yourself? I, I found myself getting tired of explaining myself. You strike me as having a really tight circle around you. Yeah, I've got four. Just There's finally, three, four who's your, who, who are your people? Um, well, I still have my friends that I had before, um, Big Brother, and then my sisters and I do have... Greg, not a huge group of friends, but people that you can just know that you just trust. And that's not saying I don't like meeting people. I love meeting people. I love people like I love interacting, but I'm just not, um, when people assume that I'm an attention seeker when I go out, like, oh, do the, the, I was doing that in a house, like, you know. Oh my God, you're 42. You don't want to do the bum dance anymore. But I still appreciate, I appreciate that what came of that and like wearing the Do you just say no now? When people oh, say, can you do I'll the dumb dance? Quick, no, sometimes I give a quick wobble. 
<laughs> it's very fucking harmless to do. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't mind? I don't mind. No, I'm not hating on it, but I'm just saying – like back then I did there was a stage where I felt like that's mm. all I was mm. like um but yeah you're so much more I love you I love you can I you believe I'm here you. after all this time I don't end all my interviews like that but oh, I really do love you I really love you I'm sure that we'll cross paths again oh that woman isn't she just divine and do you know what she's got nothing to plug no links for me to remind you of she is just herself And I just feel like that talk, that conversation, it was the balm for the soul that we all really need in these uncertain times. I just want to curl up in her lap and nestle my head between her boobs and have her just stroke my hair. It's weird. And because I know everybody's living such strange lives at the moment, mostly inside our houses, um, unless, of course, you are on the front line and you're a healthcare professional or a supermarket worker or an essential services provider, um, we've all got a little bit more time on our hands. And so we are releasing in your feed, dropping some extra episodes of No Filter, where I call someone up, someone that I know, someone that you probably know, and I just say, how are you doing? And they're just like little mini episodes that uh, will pop into your feed from time to time. I spoke to Libby Trickett last week, just after the news came through about the Olympics being cancelled. And she's locked down with her three little girls under four and her husband who has been (laughs) delaying coming home to work for as long as humanly possible. Take care. I'll be dotting those episodes of how are you doing with uh, regular episodes of No Filter because we want to strike this balance between acknowledging what we're all going through and also just taking people out of themselves a little bit. So lots of love. Please look after yourself and I think it's all going to be okay.